is one on one cloud. And obviously there's a lot of these new clouds coming out, kind of the cheap and cheerfuls uh, that you can put uh, data on. And you can imagine having uh, multiple copies of your data put in multiple places, uh, guaranteeing that if one of them fails economically, uh, you've got your data in another place. And, and so I think it's a very interesting model and not as expensive as you might think. People have been talking about the fact, I don't, I don't I have a slide here, people have been talking about the fact, but yeah, but put, taking data out of a cloud is very expensive. The numbers that we get over a three year period of time, if you replicate just one time your data to a second cloud, is less than 5% of the total cost. So it isn't that expensive if you're just making a copy of your data to, to another place. Interesting economics there. So what are the challenges of doing this? Um, one question, how do I get my data to different places? Uh, these questions of, of bandwidth, we don't want to be tromboning in and out. Uh, how, how do I manage very, very large volumes of data? Uh, how do I reduce the storage costs? We talked about a little bit. And then where in the world is my data? Uh, typical, uh, this, this new object model has advantages, but this flat namespace can have billions of objects. So trying to figure out which ones of these billions of objects are in different clouds uh, can be very challenging. So, uh, and then how do my applications know where my data is? Do every one of my applications have to be multi-cloud aware? Uh, obviously, these are they're pretty complex problems. So we were thinking about these problems and we came up uh, with a technology. Uh, it's open source, we call it Zinco. Uh, there, there's what we call our four pillars uh, and, and these are four ideas that we believe answer a lot of those questions. Uh, one of them is to have a common API across all of the other clouds. Uh, we've chosen the S3 API as, as a standard there, so you can use the same S3 API uh, to push data to one of many clouds. Uh, we've also included uh, multiple clouds as a backend, but pushing the data to the cloud in the format that that cloud is used to storing so that you can use their tools for their data. And if you decide someday that you don't want data, uh, Zinco to be part of your workflow, uh, you, you still have access to your data in, in its native cloud format. Uh, a metadata search capability that allows you to search all of the, the, the objects that you've pushed to whichever cloud from, from a central location. And then finally, uh, data management, policy management that allows you to do life cycle to replicate, to, to age data off the system. So though we believe those four key things are the key elements that are necessary to manage pools of data across multiple clouds. Now obviously, we're just doing data. And, and orchestration of your entire cloud environments uh, is, is, a, is a larger problem and we're not, we're not solving the whole problem. But it, our perspective is, there's a lot of tools out there to do that. We're wor working together with some of those, those people to make uh, a nice you know, mesh of these things together. But a petabyte of data is much harder to move from one place than another uh, than, than a workload is uh, on CPUs. So you, your, your, your EC2, your, your, your Nova instances are much easier to move back and forth between clouds than, if you, than a petabyte of data can be. So the system, uh, Today is available uh, as open source technology. Uh, it's uh, on the website zinco.io. You're, you're free to try this, uh, and, and I would encourage you to do so. This is not, you may have seen the uh, uh, magician you know, juggling chainsaws while they're running and says, don't try this at home. This is, this is not that kind of a demo. I would encourage you to try that at home. And uh, the, the code is available on, Z uh, on GitHub. Uh, this is all open source technology. We do have a commercial edition uh, and, and there's some, some additional functionality and especially uh, support of the technology. But I'm, I'm going to uh, drink my own Kool-Aid here and, and try and do a demo for you. We'll see how this goes. So here we have uh, the Zinco website, Zinco.io, and it's got this tempting button up here, try Zinco. I cheated a little bit and I've already put a platform together. What you see here uh, is what we call Zinco Orbit. It's a SaaS based management interface. So you can, this particular instance is actually running in a public cloud. Uh, you can install an instance on a Kubernetes cluster on, on your premises and then uh, it, with the, uh, the, the Orbit platform, you're, you can manage the platform with exactly the same interface. So what we have here is a dashboard of what's going on in the system, a certain number of statistics. I haven't created any new buckets recently done much on the platform. 
of late. Uh, and, and we have uh, information about the different locations uh, that, that data is being stored. I've configured this system with a, a, a certain number of, of locations already. We have an, an Azure uh, location, we have a G Google uh, Cloud Platform location, and then we have this US East that's just simply local storage uh, on the platform. And then we have uh, things like replication policies that we can create. Uh, and and I've, I've created one of the, I've got a bucket called Tigo, uh, and I'm copying, replicating that data uh, to Azure. Then we have lifecycle management, something I talked about that you can configure. Uh, if we look uh, at the storage locations uh, here, we can add new storage locations, and you see we've got our, our technology uh, for storage. You've got platforms like Wasabi, DigitalOcean, uh, other platforms, and you can just add new locations uh, to your system. So can I ask you a question here? Sure, sure. So you're, you're basically showing on uh, uh, the, 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 sorry, the, the various locations, uh, Google and, um, and Azure, right. they don't support S3. So how does that work? So, so that's one of the key uh, abilities of the technology is to abstract uh, the, the, the storage protocol. You can use the same S3 uh, interface and there's also some differences in versioning in the data models right. that are used. So you get the same look and feel across all of the platforms. And, and if you go and use the data off their platform, obviously, then you need to understand their protocols. But you don't need to understand their protocols to put your data in here. So if we t have a look at the browser here, we got some uh, of the different airports. Uh, and we've got this new famous Brandenburg Airport that's only on Google, Google Cloud because it's kind of an abstraction uh, for today. And then uh, <coughs> here on, on Schoenfeld, uh, I've, I've put a bunch of, of data in here. If I were, were to try and do a little bit of a search, uh, for instance, here's some example of searches. Uh, oh, not my, the demo gods are not on my side. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong bucket, Schoenfeld. So there we, there we go. All of the files that are one megabyte or larger, add another to zero that. All the files are 10 megabytes or larger and then no 100 megabyte files on the system. Search for tags that are colored blue. Uh, tagging uh, on an S3 model is very interesting because it doesn't modify the object, so you can add a lot of tags to an object. Uh, if I were to put tagging as pink and search, I get uh, a, an image uh, that, that's been tagged pink. Uh, now, this is a very uh, interesting uh, uh, idea that you can use the same S3 protocol interface to do uh, SQL-like uh, uh, like queries uh, uh, on either metadata, on names of files, and this is a functionality that actually doesn't exist on S3. What we've done is added a small extension uh, to the S3 protocol, so you're using the same uh, type of query. Uh, so here's one, uh, key-like report, uh, key-like Scale T. No, 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 no. Well, about, anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, there's a file that includes an uppercase, so it's even case sensitive in the way it does searches. So, how about the storage location idea? So, if if I have, if I look among my buckets here, I'd set up a, a bucket called Tego uh, that has a couple different locations. You can also access the bucket through the traditional uh, S3 tools. Here I've got my Tego bucket. I'll have a look in there. I've got a, a screenshot in there right now. How about if I add another file? I'll add uh, here, Donald Newth. Why not? <laughs> Donald Newth, I added a GIF of Donald Newth to that bucket. Uh, now that, that was uploaded to the system. Uh, in theory, that should show up on the Google Azure browser. You can see that uh, it created a Tegel uh, bucket on there. And sure enough, there's Donald Newth that's been replicated uh, to that cloud. If I go back over here and I look at the same bucket on, on Google Public Cloud, I had that Brandenburg bucket uh, that's up there that's only got, uh, it's the only place that data has been stored and there's, there's an image that I put in there. Uh, if I go back and look at my Tego bucket, there's my two images that have been replicated to the platform. So that's, that's a very simple idea uh, of the way the platform works. So uh, you push data in from uh, 
using the standard S3 interface. It can be stored locally, it can be stored only on, on a remote site, or it can be stored to a single additional site or multiple additional sites across a whole variety of flavors of clouds. And those will, uh, over time, include uh, platforms like Swift, Ceph, uh, any, any platform that's S3 compatible should work uh, out of the box today. Uh, so that's the basic idea of the technology. And then you have a metadata search that's available across all uh, of the platforms using uh, the, a simple SQL-like extension uh, to, to the S3 uh, query platform. So in case the connection between the Zenko instance and the Google Cloud or the Azure Cloud or the S3 Cloud uh, is dropped, so right. it's not available. And the replication starts in one sense and then right. fails in the other. So I, I won't try and demo that for you to do today because uh, I'm, I'm happy the network is working. Uh, but this uses a, a, a whole set of tools uh, using, using Kafka uh, to make sure that all the data, that the data, data jobs that are replicating data to other platforms are kept in queue uh, until, until the data ends up being copied uh, to additional platforms. That's one of the key challenges of doing this kind of thing. If you push the data to multiple clouds, uh, HTTP uh, in, in a WAN fashion is famous for needing to be able to manage errors. And so managing those kind of errors and making sure you, all your data is replicated over time is a very important functionality. So we handle uh, errors. We also handle a lot of the subtleties uh, having to do with versioning uh, and making sure that all the replicas match. And what uh, Orbit does is has that nice dashboard so you can have a very good view of uh, your throughput and your uh, exactly. failures and retries. Exactly, and, and we also have a, a whole collection of tools that are uh, AIM-like. I created an account here. Uh, I can create a new, new user, say, call my new user OpenStack. I generate a new key, the user uh, ha has credentials, and the classic AWS-like method where you get an open, uh, OpenStack secret key, uh, and then that key is only shown once. You can create new accounts. Uh, and uh, one, one little uh, tweak that we put on the system uh, was, was, was the ability to automatically generate, uh, here you've got a CyberDuck profile, uh, was automatically generated, and that's what I used, you can see that here, to log on to the, to the AWS platform and create an endpoint uh, on my system in, 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 where it's located. Obviously this is running on a public cloud, uh, but the, uh, the technology is designed to run in any uh, Kubernetes environment, so you can run this locally on your premise and push data. You can run it locally on, on your fa favorite cloud and it pushes data elsewhere, or, or you, you can have a different instances in different places. So we have three minutes left. We can talk about a little bit more about how to get started with Zenko, or we can take questions. So, question. What's the architecture? Is that hub and spot or peer to peer? So the, the, the architecture is indeed hub and spoke. Uh, so uh, today, uh, in, in the current version, uh, we, 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 we refer to data being in band. So data, we only know data that, that has come in uh, through Zinco. The, the early next year, we're going to be adding what we call out of band, which means any data that, that's in, that's Modified. written in any one of these different clouds can then be notified and the system learns about the data. So that, that's not exactly peer-to-peer, -peer, but it does allow data to be included or, or just the metadata to be, be included. It, all the data doesn't have to be pushed through uh, Zenko on the system. There is also a concept of using Zenkos of Zenkos, so you can connect in chain two can, or more uh, right. Zenko instances and they can push to each other because what they see from, uh, from the practical perspective is, a, is an S3 API endpoint, right. so it's just another cloud. We're, we're also um, seeing uh, some customers starting to use the same technology, uh, embedding it in, in their solutions so that they can have, via a single standardized interface, uh, access now for their solutions to be multi-cloud. Uh, we've also uh, have have a, a, a guy that's deployed this on the edge, a, a very small Zinco instance, he, he stripped out everything that was unessential, and is using it as a, as a way to, to replicate data to a public cloud using the un, frequent unavailability of a, of a private network uh, to, to handle those kinds of replication issues. So 
it really is a, a toolkit uh, of technologies that we hope uh, will get more and more usage. Uh, we're, we're planning features for the future that will include uh, being able to do Lambda-like uh, functionality or actually call out to the Lambda functionality and, and do, do analysis of different workflows. So to get started, uh, the, very, the, the easiest thing is to go to zenko.io slash admin and click on the Google button to sign in and create a new account on the software as a service platform that Brad was showing, and you can uh, launch um, a Zenko cluster, mini cluster, um, in a sandbox and play with it. And the other option is to do uh, check out the code from GitHub and run uh, Zenko Helm install on your Kubernetes, any Kubernetes uh, cluster that you have already running, public cloud or private, and uh, and get the ID that gets um, from from the output and push it into. Uh, Zenko.io slash admin to, to get your instance configured. And with that, I got stickers. Happy to hand them out. Thank you.